This is a building that was called the Olds Fishback Building. It was built in 1879. And uh, I don't know, for close to 100 years, I think the Payne family owned this and ran a furniture business out of it. Uh, and there's just great detail work if you look up along the ridge of the building. The, the curious thing about this entire block is that if you look at old photographs, the whole block was this ornate. And for some reason, those buildings that are down at the end, despite the fact that they're as old as this building, the, the facades were taken off for some reason. And I don't know if they were crumbling and it was just the easy fix, but you don't have quite the detail work that still exists on the other side. The, in doing some research about this building, when the cyclone hit on July 21st, 1883, this was where people sought refuge. Uh, and there were tables set up for feeding uh, all those who were destitute, and there were beds and cots that were provided for all the homeless people. Uh, as a result of that cyclone. So this was uh, kind of a hospital and uh, a Salvation Army and all that before any of that existed in town. And the other thing in my research, I found that 26 people were killed in that, that cyclone or that tornado that really uh, was the basis for uh, the Mayo Clinic ultimately being created. So that's just a little piece of history I found out about, about this building, that it's more than a furniture store, that that's the connection it has to the, to the uh, cyclone. Okay. Any insight into what's going to happen with? I don't know. This I would hope somebody would find a great use for this. Yeah. Multiple restaurants. Wouldn't that Bring be people nice. downtown. Yeah. That says the Hollywood Bar. <laughs> if you look up there, they should take that off. It yeah. says Hollywood Bar. It's the coolest neon sign left in town. <laughs> that is an art. That's a historic artifact right there. It's a reason to strap yourself to this building if they want to tear it down. <laughs> I didn't know that was still on there. That's cool. It's just over at one over bar. That was called the Happy Warrior. Yeah. Oh, thank you. And I never had my tie cut off there, so I'll deny that that happened. The Happy Warrior. Did you know they cut off ties? I just heard it. My brother told me. My brother told me. This is the, uh, this is the old Union Savings Bank. And uh, it was built in, uh, in 1873, believe it or not. And one of the things, I just love the the columns and kind of the intricate stonework that separates the top two floors and for years when Wong's was here they had this canopy and you never really saw the, this beautiful uh, the, the beautiful archways and where you're leaning right there is a teller window see where that and and they had it high enough so you couldn't crawl in uh, but that's where people would get their money and deliver their paychecks and then probably walk down to to a tavern and have a cold one, right? So, yeah, and I mean, this is a great example. I don't know if you've been in here, uh, but Nelson and uh, his wife have done a great job of, of retrofitting this. And it's, it's just beautiful. So it's a good example of adaptive reuse, okay? I may need some help from my friend John on this, but... Um, John, I may need your help on this. Um, well, this is information that I got from Louise Hill about um, about this block, and I want to make sure I'm ac I'm correct on this. Um, this this is the only block in town that we call historic anything, and it's historic Third Street. At least that's how I refer to it. And a lot of these buildings were renovated, according to my friend Louise, by some local architects and the Committee on Urban Environment. Um, and the Heritage Associates in the 70s. There was quite an effort that was underway. And Dr. and Mrs. Mankin, I think, were responsible for the Kennedy Building. And uh, it's kind of hidden by this tree, but uh, if you want to take a look later, uh, it's absolutely a magnificent building. Uh, in, in terms of kind of the older historic buildings in town, that, that's my favorite architecturally. And what that was, was a, a single-story saloon and a, t a tobacco factory uh, in the uh, Victorian era. And there's, there are fireplaces on all three levels. Uh, that 
underneath that Height and Randall sign, if you look underneath there, there's a, a it's purple stained glass, and that was taken out of an old picture frame well, uh, building, Monty's, right? Uh, or wasn't it? Well, it, it, it came out of Monty's and the building next door, which is the Rochester Daily News. Right. So the first that was down newspaper, there. Yeah. Right next door here. Right. Yeah. They, they came down in a fire. Um, the other thing is that that Dobby's or Jasper's. That facade is from a building that was torn down. Oh, okay. The old MC Lawler's building that is where the uh, parking lot is for Michael's restaurant. And people are always amazed because you look at that building and you go, boy, that's, a, that's an old building. Well, it, and it's, it's absolutely, it, it is really uh, quite, but they saved, and I don't know who did that, but they saved the facade. John did. Can I tell you Yeah, tell us the story about that. It's just uh, remarkable. The, um, 